after problem statement so we have discussed the business case we have discussed the effective problem statement which is 4w and 1h now we focus on the goal statement in any project that you do when you do a project uh, an it project or a six sigma project or a pmp sort of view any agile project there should always be a goal statement because if i don't know that how much i want to achieve i would never be able to do it if i tell my stakeholders that this is the problem that i that we are facing 50% 20% of my people are uh, uh leaving within 6 months or leaving within a year's time he said okay how much you can reduce it to so uh, until or unless i don't have a goal statement i would not give a get a go ahead from my uh, business head to do a project so me as a project leader has to come up with a a goal which would help me to achieve so it has to be an audacious target but it has to be a target which which should be which should be consensus with everybody so therefore to remove any sort of ambiguity uh, there is an approach which we use in the goal statement and that approach is known as smart goal okay and in s stand for specific it's clearly defined and easy to understand so that everybody understand what the goal is it should be measurable so obviously it is measurable that's why it has reached to a stage that i want to reduce from 10% to 5% attainable it should be influenced by the team i should not take an aspirational target of such which my team won't be able to work on it it shouldn't be that target that people get demotivated and never it should be an attainable target it should be relevant uh when i'm saying time bound then you should be able to give a timeline that by when you would be able to finish it always remember the goal statement should always start with a verb like to improve to reduce to increase to eliminate right so a perfect goal statement would be uh, to improve the attrition percentage of operations department from 15% to 10% by 31st of december 2020 okay so if i meet this specific measurable attainable relevant time bound components in the goal statement then i would call it as a smart goal statement so when you designing a business case please ensure that you have all these in mind while doing it you should always it should always be time bound okay then we focus on the milestones okay so milestones are the ones that for each and every phase that we have from define measure analyze improve and control i need to give a milestone this is like a project plan uh, a summary of project plan but not a detailed project plan or a gantt chart uh, wherein i should be able to mention that by when i would be able to complete the defined phase maybe tentative so the, dates yes that's what i'm that's what i'm coming on to so defined phase should typically be completed within 2 weeks time because there are certain activities to be done in the defined phase which i'll talk about later after this okay measure phase typically should take 2 to 3 weeks wherein we are trying to identify the cause of the problem and try to identify some other parameters uh analyze phase where we do the hypothesis testing the statistical test and other stuff uh that takes again 2 to 3 weeks improve phase will take typically between 4 to 8 weeks because there are sometimes uh it solutions the structural solutions are getting deployed some functionality is being added in the system sometimes there is a there is a new new tool is being developed there is a new application is being developed so so therefore uh, improve phase takes a lot of time and it requires a lot of time to identify the which solution that we are going to deploy for this particular problem or this particular cause and then uh, define measure analyze improve and then for control uh, you should give at least 2 to 3 months uh, uh to improve to sustain okay so that's how you should have the start time and the end time so likewise if you're starting a project on 1st of july so first till 15 should be defined 
16th to maybe the first week of August to, uh, should be a measure. You should give at least three three weeks more for the analyze phase because you do need to do a lot of tests, a lot of studies, a uh, lot of things to get to the root cause. Uh, then uh, entire uh, August and entire September and mid of October, you should give it for uh, the improve phase. And then uh, November, December, uh, you should give for control at least. Okay. So this is how you should, when you prepare a project charter, you gave a milestone, the start date and the end date for define, measure, analyze, improve and And uh, there is there is a model which is known as uh, which is which is known as ARMI model, which is called as Army model. Uh, this is a this is a tool which is which help us to identify or gives the roles and responsibility of each and every team member in a given project. So, uh, an A stands for the approver. Uh, the one who's giving certain decision, who are giving, uh, who is responsible for running the project successfully, who is going giving uh, approval at each and every stage. So he's the one who's giving approvals for the next phase, who's giving approvals for uh, if there's any kind of a roadblock also. The resource is a person who is not part of the project throughout the journey from defined to control, uh, whose expertise is required on an ad hoc basis. It could be a person from an IT. It could be any cross-functional person who's specialized on a particular thing. It could be a person from a quality team also who would help you with certain tools and techniques. Then the member of the person, member is the project leader and the cross-functional team members uh, who is there in the project throughout. And uh, I stand for interested party. Uh, this is uh, typically the uh, head of the department who is just required to be kept informed, uh, the FYI, but sometimes when the approver is not able to support us or to extend any kind of help, then in that case, the interested party plays an important role. So this is kind of one level above the approver, um, which there are various, this is, this is one of the CAPS tools. So CAPS stands for change acceleration plan. Okay. So there is a, there is a tool called RASI also, RASI which also works with the same principle. But you can use army model, uh, army tool, to give a responsibility to each and every team member. So I'll show you the template of how does it look like and how you want to do it. So this is also one of the component of, a, of an army, of a defined phase. So this is how the typically army phase, army model looks like. So now I want to tell you about the project sponsor project champion, project leader, team members, and quality member. How does these people fit under uh, ARM? Okay. So as I said, uh, interested party. So there is a project sponsor who is the head of the department or maybe the head of the function or head of a different business unit who is a sponsor. So he's the one uh, who is getting impacted and that's why he wants this project to be done. So he's at the top project champion is one level below the sponsor. He's responsible for giving directions, removing roadblocks, giving certain approvals, which I just talked about project leader. As I said, is a member, uh, the team members, the cross functional team members, they are also member. And, uh, if there's any quality mentor, if there's if any person, uh, who's giving an expertise, uh, that is a resource. So this is how, uh, when you uh, working on the defined phase, uh, you need to prepare a, a army slide where you would give a responsibility of each and every team member. Get an alignment with them. Please tell them what is expected out of uh, this project uh, so that they should be able to participate in each and every stage. Okay. So this is what we do it in the uh, army model. Any question so far? We have discussed a lot of topics. Uh, we have discussed the milestones. We discussed the army model. Anything? Anybody has any question? Are we good so far? Good uh, so. Sorry. 
I just had a question like so uh, the RACI model and the army model we can use them interchangeably because they are more or less uh, going for the similar kind of an idea in the defined phase am I right uh, just reconfirming yes 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 yes, yes. any of these you yeah. can so, uh, okay. so it is the purpose remains the same it's just that there are many uh, models which have been created but the most commonly used is the army model Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, somebody else also had a question. Uh, please speak up. Yeah. What is the difference between the resource and the member? Uh, okay. So, yes, yes. I, I got your question. You asked what's the difference between resource and team member. Okay. So, likewise, when we do a project, let's say if I'm doing a project on uh, improving the uh, productivity. Of, of a customer service function. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So I am just taking a hypothetical situation wherein I see that there is a project that I'm doing to improve the uh, uh, improve the productivity of an operations team. There is a customer service team, okay, who's part of operations, and I'm doing a project with them. Uh, to improve the productivity. Their productivity is very low and uh, that's the reason uh, uh, they are not meeting the customer requirement. The, the margins, the business margin is also very less. The efficiency is very low. The lot of lot many things are getting impacted. Now I identified a team and I found that uh, I should have people from different, different functions. Like I have people from finance because they are the ones uh, who's generating the invoices. I have taken people from um, the. Uh, I have taken people from the. Uh, the not from quality. I have taken people from the ordering team also, who is uh, placing the order at first place. So they are there are various stages where the project. So I have taken people from billing team, uh, wherever the customer stages it. So I have taken people from everywhere. So those all people are the members. Because the customer journey starts from placing the order, uh, selecting the requirements, uh, selecting the design, then uh, the billing department, then uh, the customer service department, and then the then it ends. But yes, in between there are many more layers within the within the operation that I deal with. I deal with finance team. I deal with uh, the ordering team. I deal with etc. All the teams. All these people who are part of the value chain are my members. But if there's any person, likewise quality or maybe IT, who's not part of the process, they are not part of the process anywhere. Without them, the transaction is taking place. But yes, as I know, I need some people who has an expertise who can, which can help me to deliver this project successfully. Likewise, IT team, because they are the ones who will be developing applications, will be doing some structural solutions. They'll be coming up with some transformation. The quality team, they will be helping me in uh, applying the right tools and techniques. They'll be reviewing whether I have done the root cause analysis in the right way or not. So those are the resource to the team. The ones who are part of the entire process journey from customer end to end, they are the member. Okay, so that's a difference between member and the resource. Resource is required not every time, only during some special requirements. Does it answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So we have covered the army. Uh, which is 